DNA, the Metaverse Dual Chain Network Architecture. Hi, I'm Alex Lightman, and today we'll talk about mortgages, past, present, and future. Mortgages are one of the most important things that a person can have in life, so I hope this is useful to you. Uh, mortgages were f called hypothetica, and it was a popular ancient form of loans in Greece and Rome. And with a mortgage, the debtor can use his property, his own land or his house, and make a profit on it. Uh, however, the lender can only claim the rights to this property if the debt isn't paid. The repledge, or taking another loan against the already pledged property, even thousands of years ago, was considered fraud and was punishable. Before the 1930s, mortgages were provided by insurance companies. They didn't actually want to make money through fees as much as gain ownership of properties if borrowers failed to keep up with the payments. So it was very predatory. And the U.S. Congress passed the Federal Home Loan Bank Act in 1932 after this wave of repossessions from banks that then failed because they couldn't unload the properties to control banks involved in this lending. In order to help to pull the country, the United States, out of the Great Depression, the Federal Housing Administration started in 1934, a new type of mortgage aimed at people who couldn't get mortgages under the existing program. And at the time, only four in 10 households owned homes. And uh, it, the peak, home ownership peaked at around 77%, and now it's uh, in the high 60s or so. Past the history of mortgages in the U.S. 1933, the Federal Deposit Insurance System and the Homeowners Loan Corporation were established. In 1936, the Federal Housing Administration was created. 1938, Fannie Mae was created to provide a secondary mortgage, uh, mortgage for FHA insured loans, the Federal Housing Association insured loans, basically giving liquidity to investors so they don't have dead capital. And if they can, if investors can put money in and then get it back out again. Uh, because there are no more investors, there are only depositors who want to get their money back, uh, then that put more money towards housing. And it, more money towards housing lowered the interest rates, which made home ownership more affordable, which created a more stable country at a time when much of the world was swept up in revolutionary movement fever. In 1944, the VA loan program was created as part of the Veterans Bill of Rights, for all these veterans demobilized from World War II. In 1948, Fannie Mae began to purchase Veterans Administration loans. 1968, how the Department of Housing and Urban Development and Ginnie Mae were created, and Fannie Mae became a shareholder-owned, government-sponsored enterprise. It's not widely known, but the federal government can invest in equity and create uh, shareholder companies anytime it wants to. In 1970, Freddie Mac was created, the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation Act. In 1981, savings and loans were allowed to invest in adjustable rate mortgages and deposit ceilings were removed. In 1982, savings and loans uh, securitized so, and sold off below market rate mortgages. In 1986, the Tax Reform Act of that year eliminated all interest-related personal deductions except for mortgages and home equity loans. And in 1989, Freddie Mac was restructured as a publicly traded company and the Federal Institution Reform, Recovery, and Enforcement Act was passed. So in 1960, the government enacted the Real Estate Investment Trust Act to allow the creation of the Real Estate Investment Trust, or REIT, or REITs, to encourage real estate development. In 1977, Bank of America issued the first private label pass-through of this. In 1983, the Federal Reserve Board amended Regulation T in 1984, the government passed the Secondary Mortgage Market Enhancement Act. The creation of the mortgage bond market is described in the book Liar's Poker by Michael Lewis, who used to work at Solomon Brothers. And we see that the 30-year mortgage rates peaked at uh, just over 18 percent, and that was uh, due to the uh, second big oil embargo that had to do with the Iranian Revolution when the Shah of Iran was kicked out. and. Uh, uh, Khomeini came in, Ayatollah Khomeini came in, and, and there was a, a big uh, shortages of oil. Uh, and since that time, mortgage rates have tended to go down, 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 down. Um, mortgages are a very big part of the Western lifestyle. 
and it's a big factor to get young people to get their own home. It motivates them to speed up their career, get married, have multiple people. And uh, also in China right now, it's very hard for men who outnumber women by about 10 percent to get married unless they can show the woman, look, I own a home, I, I can afford a home. And mortgages boost construction of millions of homes, which gives income to bank and basically stabilizes society. They're at the core. It's an even bigger part of China. 73 percent of the GDP growth of China in this millennium, the 21st century, uh, was from real estate. And we have the problem of mortgages and great recessions. Housing bubbles preceding the crisis of 2008 was financed with mortgage-backed securities and collateralized debt obligations. And the uh, elements of the crisis first became visible in 2007, and several major financial institutions uh, like Lehman Brothers uh, and, uh, and others, uh, basically Bear Stearns collapsed around September 2008. Congress passed Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Con the Consumer Pac Protection Act in 2010 as a result of those collapses, and big U.S. banks have slowly withdrawn from the mortgage market because they have so many federal rules and billions of dollars in fines for misconduct and uh, pressure to invest in areas they don't want to and more regulation. And in general, businesses want to go away from where there's a blizzard of regulations. Non-bank mortgage lenders have overtaken U.S. commercial banks to grab, uh, grab a record slice of the government and conforming loan markets. So we look at this graph here. We see credit unions have uh, stayed pretty steady at 6% of mortgage origination, 17% now for smaller banks, which is down from their typically 20, 22%. And we see large banks have fallen from 50% of the market in 2008 during the crisis to only 22% a few years ago. They've continued to fall. Non-banks were at 54% a few years ago, and they've continued to climb. And 4.76 million homeowners were on forbearance plans uh, as of the 29th of May of this year, representing 9% of active mortgages. And you also have places uh, like Minneapolis, where after the riots, 17.7% of the homes went up on Zillow alone. Under the CARES Act, Congress mandated that lenders offer what's called forbearance to homeowners who've been hurt financially by the coronavirus. And projections anticipate rates that are going to average 3.5% to almost 4%, which is what we see in the picture. And in reality, the rates are averaging 2.5% to 3.125%. So you have really low rates, but you have lots and lots of people who are asking to not pay their mortgages right now. This has got to give. This has got to blow up at some point. The lockdown is changing the game, enabling new technologies. It's, lock, it's dragging property markets, kicking and screaming into the 21st century. And real estate agents are scrambling to offer virtual visits. You can do that through uh, 3D visits of the homes. Sometimes people throw up drones to go and map it inside, at, like Matternet. And notaries are lobbying to legalize e-signatures to offset a near total halt of business because you don't have as many face-to-face -face meetings. Typically, you have 27 notarized documents with the sale of a home and the mortgage. So at present, the volatility of housing prices matches the volatility of crypto, which means that DeFi may become a viable mortgage option. And we have home prices down, GDP down, home prices up, GDP down, home prices down. Um, uh, and basically, we're gonna, we see this possibility. This could be a new big area for crypto. So why aren't home prices dropping more? I'd like to buy a house. I wouldn't mind if they dropped more. Uh, after the outbreak of the pandemic, housing demand fell as buyers lost their jobs. 40 million people became unemployed. Uh, part of their income was lost or they didn't want to be shopping for a house in the middle of a viral outbreak and during a period of great economic uncertainty. They want to, they're Americans as we, as of July 2020, are in a record savings mode for at least their recent past. And while housing demand has dropped, housing supply also dropped because potential home sellers pulled out of the market for many of the same reason the buyers are. And both supply and demand have dropped. The relationship them is kind of been largely uh, unchanged, meaning the drops in demand and supply were roughly proportional to each other. Who knew? Pretty interesting. Um, so mortgage providers are not only financial institutions, and also financial institutions don't just do mortgages. So non-bank lenders are already making more mortgage loans than traditional banks. 
This trend will only continue to accelerate in the 2020s, and thanks to new tools, conforming loans are now so easy to make that online lenders have been able to outcompete banks on speed and ease of approval. Banks are already ceding this battleground, and their share of the mortgage market will continue to dwindle in the 2020s. They're just giving up in a lot of cases. And what we see from coronavirus is less demand for mortgages, real estate prices, especially for commercial and retail and office, since people are not, are shopping online and they're meeting at Zoom, those should be falling faster. They will fall in the future. That's pretty much guaranteed. And low prices can increase demand and together with digitization power the renaissance. So it can all come back if the prices are low enough to create a whole new uh, no wave of creative destruction. Um, here are a few things that relate to crypto and, and uh, fintech. So a company based in Denver, Colorado called Liquid Mortgage has a platform that connects buyers, uh, I'm sorry, borrowers with lenders. With a liquid mortgage, uh, borrowers have a single blockchain platform that helps them track and manage payments and protects their data using encryption. And lenders have smart contract capabilities and real-time transaction data. And it started uh, two years ago, early uh, 2018, and it's working on expanding the mortgage services to a wider off, um, audience. And then Figure Company in San Francisco, California, combines AI and blockchain to help members access lines of credit and home loans. And they have a Home Equity Plus platform that connects borrowers with home loans. And borrowers fill out a short questionnaire, and once they're pre-qualified, they get payment options on the platform, and they make a video call to a notary to get all the official documents signed off. They, it was founded by uh, Mike Cagney, formula of SOFI, and the company has already raised more than $50 million to facilitate loan approvals in minutes rather than days. And again, it's speeding up the liquidity. And then you have, uh, in Australia and the U.S., TikTok mortgages, not to be confused with the TikTok app that's being banned in India and the U.S., and Rocket Mortgages, and they have entered with a never-before-seen product, the fully online instant mortgage. Rocket Mortgage launched in 2015 as the face of Quicken Loans online mortgage application. Quicken Loans owns most of the reconstructed downtown of Detroit these days. And the, these industry pioneers have proven that entire mortgage process can take place online. And then there's a, uh, basically uh, an NFT lending platform called Rocket, which is not the same as Rocket Mortgage, and they've launched virtual mortgages in Decentraland. And with these virtual mortgages, Decentraland users now have a mechanism for purchasing land in a simple, intuitive fashion without having to put up a lot of capital, and it provides cap uh, people with an option to get mortgage to buy virtual real estate. And when I said land a second ago, I meant virtual land. So you can acquire up to 10,000 land, 12 to 40% interest up to six months. We take custody of the asset until full repayment. Otherwise it's auctioned off. And um, so basically uh, Decentraland is the future of non-fungible tokens, NFTs. So let's look at a little bit at digital mortgage trends that are changing the mortgage application landscape. And what these all have in common is they point to the adoption of digital experiences for both lenders and borrowers. And uh, how is technology and borrower behavior influencing how you do business? So 92% of recent mortgage borrowers did online research before speaking to a lender. 67% of those with an existing home loan would be comfortable completing a home loan application on a computer. 74% of all borrowers used an online portal to work with their lender. 29% would be comfortable competing, uh, completing a home loan application using a mobile device. 50% in the last two years, more than 50% of all loan applications included online or mobile components. And then technology-based mortgages save roughly 2.2 billion sheets of paper every year. So in conclusion, getting a mortgage is one of the more important financial services, and it's being changed by new technologies, and digital mortgages and decentralized finance mortgages may be a part of your life in the near future. Thank you for your attention to this Lightman Report on mortgages, past, present, and future. We'll see you soon.